hello children and welcome to Sunday School today. I'm so very thankful for the opportunity to be here with you today and I hope that you've got your Bibles ready and we're going to start our Sunday School. But before we begin, what's the very first thing that we should always do? <sighs> hmm, what is it? If you said was pray, well done. And so let's pray. It's the very first thing we should always do before starting anything. So let's pray with me. A, B, C. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity that you've given us today to be able to be a part of the Sunday School in a different way. And we're thankful for each one that is watching. And I pray that we would do our very best to listen carefully to the Bible story to come, but also the memory verse and song. And as we continue to learn the Ten Commandments, that we might hide them in our hearts, that we might obey each and every one. Help us, Lord. Lord, we are thankful that when we do fail thee in, in breaking the Ten Commandments, Lord, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, you are able to forgive us of all of our sin. Please help each one that is listening today to be encouraged and helped by the Sunday School this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're so thankful that you're here, and I have some friends that are coming to help us with our song and Bible verse from Hebrews 11, verse 6. And so Miss Joanne is going to come, and Miss Mullins as well. Hello, boys and girls. This is one of my favorite parts of Sunday School, so let's get our voices all ready so we can sing this song. But without faith, it is impossible to please him without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well done. Now, I think we should probably sing this once more, and when we sing this song, you must remember where it's found in the Bible. So Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6, because as you're singing this, you're hiding God's word in your heart. So one more time, Miss Joanna. But without faith, it is impossible to please him without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well done, boys and girls. That's great. So I hope you can go back and play this video and you can really learn that song. Now remember, you can send in a few different videos to us and we'd like to premiere them right here on our Sunday School Spotlight. So if you want to send in a video of you singing the song or maybe even saying the Ten Commandments or singing the Ten Commandments song that we're going to sing again today, then that would be a great thing to do. And so for our next part, we're going to learn the next two commandments. And then we're also going to sing that song. And Mr. Lewis is here to help us today. And I'm glad he's here to help us. So you listen up. Okay, boys and girls, uh, we're concentrating on number five and number six. Honor thy father and thy mother. Now this is the first commandment with a promise in the Bible. So read in Exodus and you'll find out what promise it says to you. And also number six. Thou shalt not kill. Well, you say, I've never killed anyone. But what about if you've killed someone's character? How about that? Or you said something nasty about someone and someone thinks, oh, I don't like that person anymore. You've killed their character. Help us. We might not actually kill someone, but we can do things like that. Right, let's um, have our chorus. And Mr. Mullins is coming. And my favourite, favourite lady from America is coming to help us sing as well. Mrs. Mullins as well. So here she is, yeah. So we'll sing it twice through. And uh, you shall have no gods but me. And then when we get down to the bottom, you won't find that bit in Exodus. Love God with all your heart and mind. Unselfishly love all mankind. But that's found in the New Testament when the Lord Jesus sums up the Ten Commandments to love God. And if we love God with all our heart and all our mind and unselfishly love all mankind, well, we would be able to keep these, but unfortunately we can't because our hearts are flesh and uh, we sin all the time. But uh, let's sing our chorus then. You shall have no gods for me, never worship what you see. Do not take God's name in vain, or the Sabbath day profane. 
Give your parents an edge. See that you know how to do. Don't commit adultery or steal. However poor you be, make sure you never tell a lie or want your neighbour's property. Love God with all your heart and mind, and selfishly love all mankind. And that's going in Exodus chapter 20, so you can read all these. Ten Commandments, well, we'll sing it once again, have a real go at it, look at the words once again then. You shall have no gods beneath, never worship what you see. Do not take God's name in vain, or the Sabbath day profane. Give your parents honour due, see that you know no to do. Don't commit adultery or steal, however poor you be. Make sure you never tell a lie or want your neighbour's property. Love God with all your heart and mind. Unselfishly love all mankind. That's great. And I hope that you will hide those in your heart. And that's a song to help us to remember what each one of those Ten Commandments mean. And so we're looking forward to next week working on the next two commandments. So I hope that you're working on memorizing these things. And maybe we'll see a video of you singing it and sending it to us. And we'll put it right here on our Beaches Road Baptist Chapel Sunday School Spotlight. And so now Mr. Danny's going to come and help us with our next part of our story of Moses. So I hope that you're listening carefully. Let's pray and ask God to really help us to understand the word of God. And so God can't help us do this, so we must ask him to help us. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the Bible. And as we open it now, please help us uh, to understand the truths that are found therein. And I pray that each child would hide God's word in their heart. And they would obey the Ten Commandments. And they would obey God and love all mankind unselfishly. Just as you first loved us. Lord, we're thankful. For the Bible, help Mr. Danny now and help us each to listen very carefully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hello children. It's great to be with you all today. And I want you to do something before we begin. I hope that you have your Bible with you. Now, if you don't, I want you to pause this video and I want you to go get your Bible and then come back and play. And if you've got your Bible, very good. Now, I want you to do this, to take it and turn to the Old Testament book of Exodus and Exodus chapter 2 as we continue to look at the life of Moses. We begin here in verse number 15 and the Bible says, Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he, he, thought, he sought to slay Moses. The Bible says, But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. We find here as we pick up in the life of Moses, that he has left Egypt. And the Bible says that he, he dwelt in the land of Midian and he sat by a oh, well. Let's look together here at our first picture. We find that he's in the land of Midian and he's dwelling. And you could imagine that this was a, a bit of a desert land where he was. And there were probably many other people. In fact, we can see in our picture that there are a few other people and something is happening here. Should we look to see what's happening here in this picture? Let's continue reading. Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 16. It says, Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the trails to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. Now imagine this. There, were, there was a man, the Bible says there was a priest of Midian, who had seven daughters and they were going to feed their father's sheep to get some water. But the shepherds had come and they were trying to drive them away. They weren't being very nice to these daughters, were they? Now, you can imagine Moses was there in the land of Midian. What do you think he would have done? The Bible says this. It continues to say in verse 17. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Moses did something very nice. He went and he stopped these shepherds. Let's see the next picture we find here. In fact, Moses went and he helped them. 
He took them and he, the, the Bible says that he fed their sheep. He gave them water to drink. Now these ladies were probably very grateful. They were very thankful for this help. Now maybe you might know of somebody that's done something to help you. And one thing you could do is to be very thankful. To be very grateful for, for what they've done. Or well, let's continue to see here what happens next. And we see that they continue on their journey. And these young girls, the young women, they go back home. And the Bible says here in verse number 19, and they, they went to their father and they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. They went and told their father what Moses had done. And the Bible says here in verse 20, and he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And we find here that Moses is invited to this home of the priest of the name of Midian. The priest of Midian. And we find something very interesting happens in verse number 21. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses, Zephorah, his daughter. We find that his daughter, this priest's daughter, was given to Moses to be married. This is where Moses met his wife. We find here now Moses, a big stage in his life has happened. Now Moses is married and he's, he's met his wife and he continues on in his journey. He's left Egypt. But do you think that there is more for Moses? Do you think that there is something else that God might want for him? Well, let's continue to see what the Bible says here. We find that as he was married, and the Bible says that he bare a son, chapter number three, I want you to look with me in chapter three and verse number one. The Bible says, now Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Now Moses was taking care of this, the flock of the sheep of his father-in-law. And the Bible says, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. In verse number two, we find something very miraculous, something very interesting. I believe that Moses would never have seen something like this before. The Bible says in verse two, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Did you hear that, children? Now, I wonder if you've ever seen maybe a little fire, if you have a fireplace in your home or you've been somewhere before, maybe a bonfire or something. And whenever you burn something, eventually this fire, it, it, it will burn up whatever is on fire. But we find something very interesting. The Bible tells us that as he dwelt there, he saw a little burning bush. Maybe you can see it up there in the corner as he's looking. And we'll go over to our next picture. We see he saw a bush that was burning. Now, if you can see that picture, you see that it's on fire, but the leaves are still there. You know, something amazing happened here. And he knew that this wasn't just the bush on fire, but it was not being burned because God was in it. Did you know that there was a miracle that took place right there that happened in his life? The Bible tells us here. In verse number four, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. God was speaking to Moses through this bush. And God was speaking to him to tell him something very important. We'll look and continue to go on into this passage. And it says here in verse number nine, uh, sorry, verse number seven. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Now, do you remember a few weeks ago, we looked at the children of Israel who had been taken into Egypt and they were there and they were treated as slaves and they must have been in, in so much pain and suffering and things were very difficult for them. But you know, God saw that. And did you know this, that even you might be at a point in your life where you feel like things are very difficult. Maybe you've been in a very hard time in your life. Did you know that God sees that? And he sees what's going on. And he says, I know my people, my children, that they're suffering, it says. 
So he wanted Moses to go and to deliver them out. Now imagine one man Moses would go all the way back to Egypt where he just ran away from to go and deliver the children of Israel. You say, that's impossible. You say, how is that ever going to happen? That one man could do such a thing as this? Or there was something that God wanted to tell Moses. He wanted to promise him something. He wanted to promise. In in fact, verse 11 of chapter 3, it says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth Uh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And verse number 12, And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. God promised Moses. He said, You won't go alone, but I will be with thee. I will be with thee to deliver the man. That's an amazing promise. In fact, we find very quickly, I want to share with you a few of the things that, that God had said, as we find here, that God was speaking to Moses through the bush, we find there was a few things that he showed him. Now you can see in this picture that Moses has a rod in his hand and he carried this staff with him. Now God wanted to use what was in the hand of Moses. And you know, that's an amazing thing also that we can learn that God wants to use what we have to be willing to give to him. Maybe you have, say, I don't really have anything that I could give to God. Well, did you know God can use whatever you have? Whatever you're willing to say, I'll, I'll give everything I have to let the Lord use me. We find that God uses God in a very amazing way. The Bible says here in chapter number four and verse two, and the Lord said unto him, what is in thy hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. We find the next thing, that he threw that rod on the ground and it became a serpent. God did a miracle through Moses. In that way, we find another thing as well that God had said to Moses in verse number in verse number six of chapter four, and the Lord said furthermore unto him, "Put now thy hand in thy bosom." And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, "Put thy hand in thy bosom again." And he put his hand in his bosom again, and it plucked it out and his and his of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. We find another miracle that took place, that his hand, it was was leprous. Now this is a a disease that would have been around in those times, something that would never have been able to be cured. But we find that God allowed Moses to put his hand inside of his cloak and it changed into leprous. And then he put it back and it went back to normal again. See, God did a miracle even in that. And the last thing we find It says here, and it shall come to pass in verse number nine of chapter four, it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. This is the last thing we find here, that even the water out of the river. He said, if you take water out of the river and pour it out onto the land, he said, it will turn into blood. Now that's not anything that a man could do. You see, these were certain signs that were given to Moses to show him that God was with him. So when he went to Pharaoh to speak to him, he would know that not only Moses went, but God went with him. Now there's something that we can learn in this lesson. Something that is very, very important. You see, God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of Egypt. Did you know that God also sent somebody to deliver you? See, the Bible tells us that God sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was sent into this earth. And the Bible says that he died and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And the Lord Jesus He died for our sins. And you say, why would he do that? Why was it necessary that a man was sent, God himself sent his only begotten son? And it was so that we could be delivered from this world. We could be delivered from sin. The Bible also said we can be delivered from the wages of sin, which is death in hell. You see, God sent his son, the Lord Jesus, to deliver you from hell. And we must trust on him. We must believe 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you have put your faith and trust in who God has sent to deliver you. Now the children of Israel will see if they trust God. If they continue, when Moses goes, I wonder what will happen. Will Pharaoh listen to him? Will Pharaoh let the people go as God desires? Well, you need to come back next week and find out to see what happens in the rest of this story. Well, let's close here in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to help us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank thee for this lesson that we have learned from your word. We pray that you would help us to remember that you have sent your son, the Lord Jesus, to deliver us. So help us now, we pray, to remember these things and to trust thee if we have not as Lord and Saviour. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.